Hello VPC fans and welcome back to our 5 and 5 videos and this time we're coming back with a list of games for large groups. As I'm sure many of you know, most games are made for 2 to 6 players or even less. So what do you do if you're a group of, let's say, 8 people? To make things harder, let's assume you don't want to play Trivial Pursuit or any other trivia based party games that tend to be the go-to in these situations. You want a title with some real strategy and a bit more game. In that case, look no further than these five games. The name of this game really gives you a great feel for what the gameplay itself is like. In Panic on Wall Street, players take the role of money-grubbing venture capitalists looking to climb their way to the top. In this game, players are divided into managers and investors, and each group will have a separate winner, i.e. player with the most money at the end of the game. Each round, the managers and investors will engage in a two-minute free-for-all of noisy negotiations. Investors will then collect their income, and a roll of the die dictates the changes in the market between rounds. It's a frantic good time that absolutely conveys the stressful panic of Wall Street. Everyone's favorite camel racing game is a bit of a surprise inclusion on this list, as legitimate strategy games almost never go up to eight players. Well, this one does. In Camel Up, players will be placing bets on how well the different colored camels will do in a race around the pyramid. Outside of placing wagers on who will finish first and last in this goofy race, players will have a chance to affect the race directly by placing tiles on the board that move any camel that touches it forwards or back. And yes, this often goes very wrong due to the random way in which the camels move. Throw in that these camels actually stack on top of each other and move any camel on their back with them, and you have yourself one fun and silly race. One of the most popular games for our gurus to recommend for big groups, The Resistance does an amazing job of riding the line between party game and full-on strategy game. As most of you know, The Resistance is a game about a minority group trying to overthrow a dystopian government by sending their agents out on missions. But within The Resistance are spies. Can your team figure out who the spies around the table are by seeing which missions fail and which succeed? Either way, be prepared for accusations to get thrown around like curse words in a Tarantino movie. So this may not be the game for people who don't like being called a dirty liar because at some point in this game, you will lose trust in everyone around you. By far the most ethereal game on this list, Dixit puts players in a dreamscape of gorgeous cards with ambiguous drawings. Now just to be clear here, we're not talking about the original Dixit. If you remember from our intro, our criteria is a game that can play at least eight players. And while the original Dixit can't support that player count, the newer base game, Dixit Odyssey, supports up to 12 players and contains all the same fun as the original, just different cards. For those of you that don't know, Dixit's a game about being just ambiguous enough. When it's your turn, you give a clue and then play a card. And everyone else plays a card, but tries to match that clue just enough so that when everyone's guessing who actually put down which card, some people guess your card, but not everyone. No game on this list gets replayed nearly as much as One Night Ultimate Werewolf. I don't know if I've ever seen a group play just one game of One Night, because after your first game, you just have to try it again with different roles. For the uninitiated, One Night takes players in a certain role of a certain type of villager or a man-eating werewolf. The game starts with a brief round of you enacting your special role abilities by peeking and manipulating the roles of everyone else at the table. This is followed by another brief and a very hectic round of free-for-all negotiation and deduction. During this phase, players will be accusing each other of being werewolves like McCarthyism is back in style, and, using logic, try and come to a vote on who the werewolves are. If the villagers guess right, they win. If not, they get eaten. That's it for our list and our video. Don't forget to leave us any questions, omissions, or grievances in the comments below. And you're welcome to come down to the cafe and argue with us in person and try any of these great games. And if you really liked our video, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. Thanks for watching, and as always, game on.